Capturing a UFC title is a surefire way for any fighter to increase their earnings and heighten their profile. As such, regardless of circumstance, most athletes will jump at the chance to compete for a championship. That said, as history has shown, just because a competitor is granted the opportunity to compete for the gold doesn't mean they have a realistic chance of winning it. To drive the previous point home, we're about to take a look at some of the most overmatched title challengers in UFC history. As always, if you guys enjoy this video, then please be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to our channel. Now, without further ado, and ranked in no particular order, let's take a look at 10 UFC title challengers who never stood a chance. Number 10. Megan Anderson vs. Amanda Nunes Australia's Megan Anderson is a six-foot-tall featherweight who is known for her punching power. While the Glory MMA product captured the Invicta FC title, her lack of takedown defense hampered her success in the UFC. Still, Anderson was skilled enough to earn back-to-back -back wins over Zara Farron and Norma Dumont, which was enough to warrant a title shot in the UFC's underdeveloped women's featherweight division. Unfortunately for Anderson, the woman holding the featherweight strap was, and still is, Amanda the Lioness Nunes. The reigning featherweight queen is a tough matchup for anyone, but especially in this instance. Besides the fact that Nunes had the grappling chops to exploit the Aussie's ground game deficiencies, she was also light years ahead of the challenger in terms of technical striking. Lastly, the Lioness is one of the few women who could more than match Anderson in the power department. When the two met at UFC 259, the bout played out as expected. Nunes got her opponent to the mat and used a reverse triangle armbar to secure the submission victory in a little over two minutes. The UFC 259 title match was the final fight on Anderson's contract, which the UFC opted not to renew. Number 9. Joe Soto vs. TJ Dillashaw Former NCAA All-American wrestler Joe Soto is a former Bellator champion who had a respectable 15-2 record prior to signing with the UFC. Initially, the bantamweight out of California was supposed to make his promotional debut against Anthony Bershak on the UFC 177 prelims. However, when one half of the main event, Henan Barrow, was forced out of the bout after a tough weight cut required him to be hospitalized, Dana White and company were desperate for a replacement. Barrow was scheduled to face bantamweight champ TJ Dillashaw in a highly anticipated rematch. With roughly a day to find someone to face the champ, the organization was forced to go with another bantamweight already on the card, which turned out to be Joe Soto. One certainly can't blame him for seizing an opportunity to compete for a UFC title. Still, taking on one of the all-time great bantamweights on a day's notice in your promotional debut is a tough ask. To be fair, Soto made a respectable showing under the circumstances, but ultimately had no answer for Dillashaw's slick combinations and was eventually put away in the fifth round. Joe Soto would end up going 3-5 during his time in the UFC before being released in 2018, but he can at least say he headlined a pay-per-view. Number 8. Jessica I vs. Valentina Shevchenko Valentina Shevchenko is a champion who has outclassed all of her opponents since capturing the UFC women's flyweight title in 2018. Truth be told, none of her challengers have really stood a chance of dethroning her, so it's almost a bit unfair to single out Jessica Evil I. Still, when it was announced I was scheduled to challenge Shevchenko for the championship at UFC 238, it was hard to see a path to victory for the challenger. While she did have some solid wins on her resume, she's never shown the type of one-punch knockout power needed to have the proverbial puncher's chance. Her only finish since signing with the UFC in 2013 was a TKO due to a doctor's stoppage in her UFC 180 bout with Leslie Smith. Moreover, Jessica I is a fighter who primarily relies on her striking, an area in which Shevchenko is among the very best in the world. Simply put, there was no planet on which I would outpoint the bullet over the course of five rounds. As predicted, the challenger had no answer for Shevchenko's elite striking and was put away early in the second round with a highlight reel head kick. The UFC 238 contest showcased the glaring difference between a good fighter and a great one. Number 7. Antonio Silva vs. Cain Velasquez Antonio Bigfoot Silva made quite a name for himself while competing in Strike Force with wins over Andrei Arlovsky and Fedor Emelianenko. As such, he was immediately thrown into the deep end when he entered the UFC. For his promotional debut, Silva was scheduled to face former heavyweight champion Cain Velasquez at UFC 146. Unfortunately for Bigfoot, his inaugural UFC bout couldn't have gone much worse. Velasquez's mix of power and athleticism proved to be too much for the Brazilian giant. The former champ took his opponent down and beat him into a bloody pulp on his way to picking up a first-round TKO victory. To his credit, Silva rebounded nicely with wins over Travis Brown and Alistair Overeem, which was enough to earn a title shot in what was a very shallow heavyweight division at the time. 
The bad news for him was that Cain Velasquez had since recaptured the heavyweight crown, setting the stage for a rematch that no one was clamoring to see. When the two met for a second time at UFC 160, Velasquez was once again able to dominate his opponent, this time putting the overmatched challenger away in just under a minute and a half. Number 6. Derek Lewis vs. Daniel Cormier The Black Beast Derek Lewis has often been able to rely on his otherworldly power to neutralize more technically sound opponents. Still, the New Orleans native's heavy hands did not come into play when he challenged Daniel DC Cormier for the heavyweight strap at UFC 230. With no grappling pedigree to speak of, it was clear Lewis would likely need to land a fight-ending blow if he hoped to dethrone an Olympic wrestler like Cormier. However, the odds of that were slim. Since Daniel Cormier was light years ahead of Derek Lewis in terms of grappling, most expected DC to be able to take Lewis down at will and nullify his power. In the end, the big shot never came as DC's wrestling proved to be too much for the Black Beast. A little over two minutes into the second round of their title bout, Cormier submitted the challenger with a rear naked choke in a fight that played out the way most pundits expected. Number 5. Elvis Sinisic vs. Tito Ortiz the king of rock and rumble Elvis Sinisic was an Australian fighter who unfortunately struggled in the UFC. During his time in the promotion, the jiu-jitsu specialist managed to pick up only a single victory in seven trips to the octagon. That said, his one victory happened to be a submission win over the highly touted Jeremy Horn at UFC 30. Though the win put the Aussies' record at an uninspiring 4, 3, and 1, the higher-ups decided to give him a crack at the UFC light heavyweight champion Tito Ortiz. At the time, Ortiz was one of the pound-for-pound -pound best. Conversely, despite a jiu-jitsu pedigree, Sinisic was not an elite mixed martial artist. His striking was below average, even by early 2000s standards, and his wrestling was mediocre at best. When the two met in June of 2001 at UFC 32, the Huntington Beach bad boy used his signature ground and pound to take the challenger out in the very first round. Despite the cool nickname and competing for a UFC title, the king of rock and rumble would finish his career with an 8-11-2 professional record. Number 4. Dan Hardy vs. George St. Pierre Nottingham, England's Dan the Outlaw Hardy got off to a hot start in the UFC, winning his first four fights in the organization. His decision victory in a title eliminator bout with Mike Swick at UFC 105 set the stage for a showdown with the welterweight champ, George Rush St. Pierre. While Hardy was a good striker, his lack of a grappling pedigree made him easy prey for Rush and his heavy takedown attack. When the two collided at UFC 111, it soon became clear that the champion was simply on another level in terms of speed and athleticism. While the outlaw managed to go the distance, his offense consisted of just four significant strikes landed over the course of 25 minutes. For his part, St. Pierre secured 11 takedowns and smothered the challenger for the majority of the fight, resulting in a remarkably one-sided unanimous decision victory. Number 3. Chael Sonnen vs. John Jones Few fighters are capable of talking their way into a title fight fresh off being TKO'd by a champion in a lower weight class, which is precisely what the American gangster Chael Sonnen did. After coaching opposite one another on The Ultimate Fighter 17, Chael Sonnen met John Jones at UFC 159 with the light heavyweight title at stake. The American gangster generally used a takedown heavy attack to neutralize his opponents. However, this strategy was never going to work against the larger John Jones, who also has an impressive wrestling pedigree in his own right. Moreover, the champ also possessed a significant reach advantage to go with a far more diverse and explosive striking arsenal. In truth, it was hard to see a path to victory for the challenger heading into UFC 159. Despite severely injuring his toe, Jones managed to take his opponent out with a series of elbows and punches in the closing moments of round one. Interestingly enough, had the first round concluded, Jones's injured toe likely would have resulted in a doctor stoppage and cost him the light heavyweight title. Number 2. Betch Cahaya vs. Ronda Rousey Recently retired UFC bantamweight Betch Cahaya had a nice run in the UFC, despite only being introduced to MMA roughly two years before her promotional debut in 2013. The accountant-turned-fighter used her slick boxing to win her first nine pro fights, including victories over Ronda Rousey's teammates Jessamine Duke and Shayna Baszler. Though Cahaya enjoyed great success against her stablemates, Rousey herself proved to be a different animal entirely. As someone who won a bronze medal in the Olympics, Rousey is a second-generation martial artist who had been training since she was a child. To put things in perspective, she already had roughly 12 years of combat sports experience when Cahaya first started training. The skill gap quickly became apparent when she challenged Rousey for the bantamweight title at UFC 190. In the end, it took just 34 seconds for the champ to swarm the challenger and land a knockout blow. Number 1. Jorge Masvidal vs. Kamaru Usman 2 
After landing the flying knee heard round the world, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal would become one of the sport's biggest stars and eventually earn his long-awaited title shot versus the Nigerian nightmare Kamaru Usman at UFC 251. When the two first clashed at Fight Island, Usman won fairly convincingly by keeping the challenger pressed against the cage and mixing in takedowns. However, since Gamebred took the fight on short notice, combined with the fact that Usman requested it, a rematch was scheduled to go down at UFC 261. The conventional wisdom was that Usman would need to implement the same type of game plan he used in the first fight to avoid Masvidal's hands. Of course, the Nigerian nightmare shocked onlookers by not only beating him in the grappling department, but also on the feet as well. During their second encounter, Usman beat Masvidal at his own game, landing a nasty right hand in the second round that put his opponent to sleep, demonstrating that he could win the fight whenever and however he wanted to. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to our channel. Apart from that, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.